name's Tristan Petrash. A few years ago, I was working in this restaurant with this really amazing Filipino kid named Mark. Well, one day he was feeling a little down, so I offered to make him some food to cheer him up. And the dish that he asked for was this Filipino mung bean soup. Needless to say, he was happy. But it turns out it was actually really delicious. So today we're gonna make what is probably the healthiest thing I've ever made on this channel. Gin is saying, no, it's, it's, it's gin. Is it gin? Is it gin? Uh... Mark? Ginitaang mongo. Yeah, that. If you're unable to find these itty bitty little green beans, you can use green lentils instead. They're fairly close in terms of taste and texture. Unlike most dry beans, you don't need to soak these prior to cooking, as they take about 40 minutes start to finish. So in a small pot, combine the mung beans, double the amount of water, and kosher salt. Bring to a boil over high heat, cover and simmer on medium low. While the beans are doing their thing, we can start prepping the veg, starting with some onions that we're going to peel and dice. You could slice or rough chop the onion, but the texture is much nicer when the vegetables are roughly the same size as the mung beans. Next, we'll need some garlic, which I'm choosing to thinly slice, mostly because I don't want to have to wash my microplane, but also practicing your knife skills never hurts. And speaking of knife skills, if you're looking to upgrade yours along with your confidence, consider a monthly membership to my channel. There you'll get access to my new how-to series, starting with basic knife skills. Now, it wouldn't be a healthy dish without some leafy greens. Spinach is pretty common in but it's equally as good with kale or even Swiss chard. Cut off the woody stems, then slice in half. You can chop them up smaller, but I personally prefer bigger pieces in mine. Because these are fresh greens, it's important to thoroughly rinse them off in cold water first. Believe it or not, leafy greens are a major spreader of harmful bacteria like E. coli, salmonella, and listeria, but simply washing them off in cold water is enough to remove 99% of them, along with any remaining dirt and soil. Lastly, some tomato. I'm using canned because they're cheaper. It's also the middle of winter, and fresh ones are not only expensive, but they're also not the best quality. This is a fairly quick soup to make, and so the tomatoes won't have sufficient time to break down. Therefore, dicing them nice and small is the best way to go. It still gives them some texture in the soup while allowing them to break down just enough. By now, the beans should be fully cooked and tender, with about half of them starting to mash up, which is exactly what you're looking for, since they'll act as a thickening agent for the soup, giving it a nice mouthfeel. For the protein, I'm going with this piece of pork side, it's still pork belly, just cut from the side instead of the center. It's also significantly cheaper than center cut belly, though pork shoulder or even loin work just as well. With pork belly in particular, there's so much fat that it'll shrink in size by more than a third, so you always want to err on the side of cutting it a bit bigger than you want the final result to be. This cast iron Dutch oven is easily one of the most versatile and well-used pieces of equipment in my kitchen. Definitely a must for every home cook, but ultimately any heavy bottom large pot will do. Heat it over medium high heat and add a few splashes of a neutral oil like canola once nice and hot, then toss in the pork side. The pork will take a bit to render its fat, so the oil just gives it a jump start. Then season generously with kosher salt and freshly cracked black pepper. It will take a bit, but once the fat starts to render, it'll essentially start to fry in its own fat and start to brown. The downside, though, is when the pork is almost fully browned, you'll be left with an excessive amount of fat, defeating the purpose of a healthy soup. Drain off the excess or simply blot it up with some paper towel. As I usually have an abundance of saved fat in my fridge, I have no need for any of it. Add the onion and garlic and continue to cook over medium-high heat until the onions are soft and translucent and the garlic is fragrant, making sure to stir frequently. Then add the tomato and cook for another minute. Toss in the spinach and stir until it starts to wilt and reduce in size. If you've ever cooked with fresh spinach before, you know that it's basically going to be a fraction of what you initially started with. So just keep stirring and mixing until it looks something like this. 
Finally, we can add the mung beans. Because mine sat and cooled down a bit, they're kinda clumped together, which is totally fine because they're easy enough to break up. Then top it off with about a liter and a half of chicken stock. This recipe will make enough for four to six people. It's also easy enough to make vegetarian or even vegan by switching out the protein and using a vegetable stock instead. As a wise person once said, you do you. Season with some soy sauce and fish sauce. Like in last week's episode, I'm again using Red Boat, which is a cold first pressed fish sauce, similar to extra virgin olive oil, but any fish sauce will do, or omit altogether for a vegan soup. Allow the soup to simmer for roughly 30 minutes or until it's reduced and thickened slightly. Then season with a small amount of kosher salt and freshly cracked black pepper. Just keeping in mind that the soy sauce, fish sauce, and chicken stock will all be fairly salty to begin with. Mm. 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 Then bust out your fanciest bowl and fill it to the brim with this hot and delicious smelling soup leaving us with what I would argue is the best part, the topping, which comes in the form of chicharron or pork rinds. They're puffy and crispy pieces of dried, then fried pork skins. They give the soup a bit of texture and some added porky flavor. They also make crackling and popping sounds in the soup, which you have to admit is kind of fun. And that's it, Filipino mung bean soup. At its core, this dish is essentially a healthy version of pork and beans, without the sugar and lots of greens. Mung beans also provide a ton of protein, vitamins, and minerals. They're also great for people with dietary restrictions, and their carbohydrates are easily digested, meaning you won't feel that usual bloating you get while eating most other beans. If you like my channel and are interested in supporting it while getting some cool perks, like access to my private Discord server, bonus content like my how-to series, and shoutouts in episodes, you can check out my coffee page. I'll leave a link for that as well as the equipment I used in this episode and the equipment and services I used to make this episode in the description. And hey, if you've made it this far, consider liking, subscribing, and commenting. They're the easiest ways to support the channel and help it grow. Thanks for watching, and stay awesome. Okay, <laughs> Hey guys, it's Mark here. You see this? Come here, come here, okay? That's right. I'm the one who taught him how to trim his beard. Yeah. You alright? Oh, you can die of it. Ginita ang mungo. Is that good? That's not good. See?